Making way for greener spaces, four public housing estates among six more areas designated as car light as Singapore moves towards a more sustainable future. Oh, for more, we're joined by Associate Professor Dr. Walter Thesera. He's from the Singapore University of Social Sciences. Good evening, Dr. Thesera. It appears that such uh, car-like neighbourhoods and estates, they're gaining some momentum now. How would you gauge public acceptance of them, though? Well, I think it's still a bit too early to tell. We need more research. Uh, but what we do know is, if you look globally, car light developments actually get a lot of interest from people. Uh, that's because what we want is a vibrant neighborhood, good shopping spaces, a sense of community. And car light developments often deliver that because they basically put people back onto the streets instead of cars. So, you know, the point is, it's not about the car. It's about the quality of the neighborhood and the life in it. And car light developments can give you a good quality of life because they reduce the space given over the cars, they put people first. So that's the idea. So today's announcement really focuses primarily on upcoming projects. Do you see the car light movement perhaps extending to existing towns and infrastructure in a bigger way? And, and if that were to happen, what would be the trade-offs? Well, I think uh, remaking our city centre and all our neighbourhood centres, that's a top priority. Uh, because if you look worldwide, there's a big difference between uh, city centres built around cars and those built around people. And what we've seen in the last few decades is quite a big divergence between uh, cities globally. You've got cities in Europe, uh, they progressively tried to remove cars from the city centre. They have brought people back into the heart of the city. But you also have cities which have built more and more roads. They've made it worse for people. And unfortunately, a lot of the cities around us in Southeast Asia are actually like that. Uh, they're congested, they're difficult for people to get around. So I think in Singapore, the only way we can go if we don't want everybody to own a car is we have to reduce road space, improve accessibility for pedestrians, active mobility. But that means tilting the balance away from cars. We only have so much space, so uh, we will have to make some tough choices in the years ahead. Some tough choices indeed, but efficiency in public transportation often falls on the issue of first and, and last mile options that we have. Uh, Dr. Thesera, give us your assessment of the options that we have on that score in Singapore right now. And what else perhaps is needed on this front for the country to truly uh, cross over to car light? Well, the key really is uh, we have to make the pedestrian experience, the cycling or active mobility experience, as good as or better than driving for at least, you know, a local trip. Um, you know, today, if you walk around our neighborhood, you're going to see that sometimes the pedestrian or cycling experience is not so good. We've all seen uh, badly placed road crossings that force us to walk a very long way around across the road. Uh, you know, when you don't have bicycle paths, you force the cyclists onto the road or they get into conflicts with pedestrians. And the reason for all of these problems is we've actually spent decades making our roads better, our parking lots and facilities better. And that's why our driving experience today is so good. And what we've got to do now is we need to put the same investment into making the non-driving experience much better. Yeah, and one way to do that, uh, I think, uh, is, you know, pedestrianising, right? So we've seen a couple of uh, places in Singapore adopt that approach, you know, in the name of being car light. It's been welcomed by many quarters, but the thing is, Singaporeans are a pretty car-loving bunch, as, as we can see from, you know, recent COE bidding sessions. How do we balance the interests of all parties? Well, I think it starts with asking, why do we like cars so much? And the reason why we like cars is, you know, over the years, we've built up Singapore to favour the car. Uh, there's parking in the middle of the town centre, the roads going in and out, they're very good, they're in very good condition, you can drive in and out very easily. And, you know, the end experience, the end result is that uh, it's easier for many people to drive rather than to take public transport. So for car light to work, this actually has to change. It has to become easier for people to get to where they want to go uh, by walking, cycling or riding rather than by driving. And what that means is it's actually not possible to make everybody happy. You know, the, the history of urban planning tells us that when you make the, a town more accessible for a car, it actually means making it worse 
for pedestrian and cyclists. Uh, so what we have to aim for is the car has to eventually become the second best choice rather than the best choice. Uh, because once it becomes the second best choice, then you will get a reduction in car use. You'll get people thinking, you know, I don't want or need a car. Today, uh, the car is a sensible choice for a lot of people with money because it's comfortable and convenient. And we have to reverse that. We've got to make public transport, walking and cycling become the sensible choice, even if you can afford a car, right? Because it's going to become more comfortable and convenient than using a car. Uh, Dr. Thesera, uh, let's talk about opportunities for businesses and perhaps other groups on the sidelines. Uh, quite apart from uh, the green agenda, as it were, a, a car light economy, if you will. Well, I think the exciting thing here is uh, pedestrianization, car light developments elsewhere. What they've done is they've really helped to breathe new life into town centers, and they've encouraged economic growth away from the, the big shopping mall model of lots of parking spaces. And the other thing to consider is, you know, we all spend a lot of money on cars, which sit parked for most of the day. And we also spend a lot of public resources on parking spaces and roads. And the reason we put up with all of this, the reason why we sink in so much money into cars is that the cars are good at getting us to places we want to go because our cities are built around the cars. Uh, but that's actually a lot of money that could be freed up if we found a better way of traveling. So, you know, it's not about spending the money we're going to spend on cars on bicycles instead of something like that. That's thinking very narrowly. It actually goes beyond that. It's about having more businesses and social activities in car light town centers, uh, having more public spaces and green spaces, you know, basically just putting that money and resources we currently spend on cars and infrastructure to better use this for our entire society. Dr. Thesera, thank you very much for your perspectives this evening. Associate Professor Walter Thesera there from Singapore University of Social Sciences.